take a look at this example. Um, it's kind of a complicated looking problem. So um, we're going to solve for the BIQ immediately after we start this circuit and then after it's been flowing for a long time. So why don't you see if you can press pause and see if you can solve both of these and then come back to this. So in the, the first case, it's actually kind of a trivial case. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Notice as soon as you connect this circuit, this becomes a short, right? This is going to become a short here. And once you short that out, our circuit looks just like very simple, right? Here's our circuit. Okay, these two resistors over here, they're not going to get any current flow through them whatsoever. You're just going to have a, a 4 ohm and an 18 volt circuit. Okay, so that's pretty trivial. This voltage would be 18 volts. Okay, the current through here would be 18 divided by 4, which is 4.5 amps. The current through the um, capacitors would also be 4.5 amps. So anyway, that's what you get. Um, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I'm not even going to waste my table here filling that in. So let's take a look at the long time case. So this has been connected for a long period of time. When that happens, remember, this is now treated as an open circuit. In fact, if this was open here, essentially, notice what we have. We just have our good old resistor-only circuit that looks like this. Four three, and six. Okay, so if you could solve the voltage and the current, if you didn't solve it earlier, why don't you take a step now? I know you can all do this problem. Go ahead and solve this circuit and um, pause the video and then come back. So I'm going to go ahead and whip through this quickly. Um, hopefully you actually paused and solved this. So let's go ahead and find the equivalent here. This is going to be 4 ohms. We're going to use 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 equals 1 over R. When you do that, you should get 2 ohms here. And then we'll go one more step further. And these are in series, so we're just going to add those up. So we're going to get 6 ohms here. This was 18 volts. We're going to now work our way around the circuit. So 18 divided by 6 equals 3 amps. So we have 3 amps through here, which means we have 3 amps through here. We're going to find the voltage drop across this. V equals IR. That should give us 12 volts here. V equals IR. That should give us 6 volts across here. So now we're going to make it back onto this original circuit. This was 3. This was 12. Okay. This was 6 volts across this. Okay, these are in parallel, which means there is a 1 amp going through here, and this is also has 6 volts, so that means there is 2 amps going through here. Okay, if I just went too fast for you, then I'm just going to refer to you one of my previous videos where I kind of step you through this a little bit slower. So let's go ahead and fill this in. So across the 4 ohm resistor, we had 12 volts and 3 amps. Across the 3 ohm resistor, we had um, 2 amps, this was 1 amp, and then the voltage across these was 6 volts and 6 volts. Okay, so that brings us to the last part of the problem. So notice this, uh, this right here, this was 6, this is 6 volts, actually let me just draw it on this one. So this is 6 volts here. Okay, which means across these two capacitors in series, we also have six volts. In fact, we could just take this little piece right here and pull this to the side and say, all right, I have six volts here. I have my two capacitors hooked up to six volt power supply voltage source. You could think of it like that. And so if I asked you this problem, oh, here's 10 farads, here's 15 farads capacitor, and I hook this up to 6 volt, could you find the charge stored on these and the voltage across? And I think you could. So if so, go ahead and pause this and see if you can finish up this problem. So hopefully you're able to do that. 
um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So remember when you have capacitors in series, okay, you're going to um, you're going to solve for the equivalent capacitance by using one over. So one over ten plus one over fifteen equals one over C. Okay, I'll let you do the math on that. You should get a C of six farads. That means this is going to have a C of six farads here. Okay, and then what we'll do is say, oh, okay, let's find the charge across that. So we're going to go Q equals C times V. So it's going to be six times six, six farads times six volts equals 36 coulombs. So the charge across this is going to be 36 coulombs. Okay, recall for series capacitors. These are going to take on the same amount of charge. Okay, so you're going to have 36 coulombs on this one and 36 coulombs on this. Let's go ahead and fill that in. So the 10 farad is going to have 36 coulombs. This is going to have 36 coulombs. I didn't write the current. Remember, a steady state, a long time, the current would be zero. Right? No more current flowing through those branches. So now we just want to finish this up and find the voltage across these. So we use the same thing, Q equals CV, or in this case, V equals Q over C. And since we do know the charge, this would be 36 divided by 10. Okay, that's 3.6 volts. So that means there's going to be 3.6 volts across this one. Okay, remember this should now add up to 6 volts, which means this must be 2.4 volts across this. Okay, uh, and you could also use Q over C, right? This would be 36 divided by 15, and you should get 2.4 volts. So let's finish this up. Let's finish, we're going to put this as 3.6 volts across the 10 farad capacitor and then 2.4 volts across the 36.